Well, howdy, folks. Welcome to episode 44 of Do Not Worry. I know this is weird. We've been away for, like, over a month, okay? I'm out of it. Newell's feeling out of it. We kind of forgot how to do this. Who, what's your name again? I forget. Um, welcome back to the show, folks. Um, uh, as I get used to things again, please remember to like this video. Leave a comment. Uh, your engagement is very helpful for a small channel like this one. I'm trying to remember everything I used to say. Subscribe to the channel. Become a Do Not Warrior. Uh, we passed the four, five point, we're almost at five and a half, I think, 5.5K subscribers, or we're, we just, we're hovering around the 5.5K. Thank you guys so much. That is awesome. Please subscribe to the channel so we can hit that 6K subscriber mark, then seven, eight, nine, all the way to 10, then I can kill myself. Aww. I'm kidding, folks. We got a lot of interesting topics to talk about today. Okay, way too many topics. We're talking Dr. Food and Joseph Shada had an Instagram live together. Hmm, they talked about us. Dr. Food uttered our names. Uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, Sushi Holic, the interns, did a lovely review of Sushi Holic, the restaurant, which was rebranded by Dr. Food. Uh, they actually reached out to Noor. They sent her a DM. They're like, hey, we're not associated with Dr. Food anymore, blah, blah, blah. We never responded to them because we're going to respond to them live on this show, motherfuckers. Mm-hmm, y'all know how it goes. Nanobytes Inc., our favorite American tourist, got his passport stolen again, but this time in Barcelona. God damn it, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, how dumb can you be? Stop getting your passport stolen. Actually, I don't mind. It's, it's entertaining for all of us. Um, Perfect Strangers, folks, the movie that has broken air of Netflix, or otherwise known as Ashab Wala, Wala Az, right? And um, we're going to review the movie and we're going to read some homophobic tweets, some angry tweets from angry Arabs who can't stand to, I don't know, to think about women doing sexual acts. It's pretty funny. Anyways, what else do we got? Patrons, folks, we've been away for over a month, almost 40 days. Uh, we could not have remained afloat without our lovely patrons who stuck by our side during the the holiday period, they gave us their love and they gave us their money, more importantly. Uh, they made sure that Noor can get paid. Elijah, oh, by the way, if you guys are wondering where Elijah is, Elijah was in contact with someone who was positive for COVID. So we're just taking precautions. Elijah's staying home. He'll be back next week, maybe, or maybe not. Who knows? Uh, I might even have COVID. I went to Chili's on Sunday. That was pretty full. So, uh, but first, let me thank a few of our very... Honestly, awesome patrons. Patrons like Noor Jabur, Rudolf Wasim Hijazi, Gino Raide, yeah, the one and only Gino Raide, uh, Jad Venture, who released a short film that I, uh, that I would love to see on the big screen. He sent me a little secret link. I got to see it. Thank you, Jad. I, I've spoiled it. Um, uh, Karim Baladi, Malik Kalash, thank you guys so much. Nicolas Malouf, Enzo, Jessica Jalou. Really, you guys have been with us for so long. We love you guys. You keep my interns hired. You keep this show running uh by the way it was superhero patron ziad ashar's birthday today by the time this comes out it's two days later but ziad happy birthday my man thank happy you so birthday, much for the support ziad. we got two new superhero patrons tad jammo i hope i'm saying your name right buddy thank you so much for supporting us on such a high level and edward sphere got his membership today thank you so much edward for joining our patreon family you guys are awesome for every patron who unsubscribed thank you as well for, for for supporting us even if it's for one month even if you just donated five bucks it means so much to us we really love all of you so if you, whoever needs to unsubscribe no pressure man it's not awkward we love everyone who has graced us with their patronage consider joining us on patreon check the link in the description you would be doing us a massive favor Thank you so much. We love you all. Superhero patrons like Nadine Najla, Joseph Nasser, Eli Tawil, Fadi Mukarzil, and Russia, Audi, and Khalila Faye Thompson. Love all you guys. Uh, before I traveled to the States, we got awesome gifts from a uh, good friend, Rafi Al Hariri. Not that Rafi Al Hariri, okay, but he's a tremendously talented young artist called Rafi Al Hariri. He sent me and both of the interns each a copy of his book. Um, I found a heart. It has lovely art in there. It is beautiful. Thank you so much for the amazing present, Rafi. If you guys are curious uh, where you can find this book, or how you can buy it, I'm going to put Rafi's Instagram link in the description of this video. So check it out. Before we get into the topics, let's just chat about a couple of things. Vacations. Did you have a cool vacation? What, what did you do? Uh, it was a really good vacation. It's, it was a much needed break. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, it's stressful. Doing the show is stressful, folks. For me, uh, I was, as you guys know, I was in the States for a month. It was very chill. Uh, a lot of my plans got canceled because of Omicron. 
Um, I was supposed to go to New York for a week to see my friend. Couldn't do that because he got COVID. And then almost everyone I knew in the States, half of the people got COVID. Everyone here had COVID apparently. But like, it was just hard to do stuff. And I know I promised you guys vlogs. What happened to the vlogs, Anthony? I can't fucking vlog, guys. It's too awkward for me. I cannot walk into like a mall or be like, hey guys, how's it going? I'm here at the mall. We're going to try a cheeseburger. I, I can't do that. It's too awkward for me. Um, so hopefully I get the courage to do it one day. I just felt like a douche. I don't know. It's just not me. So for those of you who are expecting vlogs and who are disappointed that I did not post any vlogs during my trip, um, I'm sorry. Okay, it's just way too weird. But I do want to try to do vlogs one day because it is it is a good avenue for video. Quick update, folks. We The Shada documentary came and went, folks. We dropped that thing. It hit 20,000 views, which is massive for my channel. You know, it's like double the closest video in terms of views. Uh, we Our videos usually average between like four to 5,000 views. So this was pretty awesome. 98% of the comments that I read were extremely positive. We got a lot of positive tweets and all that sort of thing. So thank you to everyone who watched the documentary. We love you. We worked very hard on it. And I would like to do more stuff like that. Now, with all that said, let's get into the show. The first main topic on this comeback episode is Dr. Food and Joseph Shada doing an Instagram live. Now, if you guys saw the Joseph Shada documentary, you will remember Ryan, who is Joseph's best friend. So I'm chilling in the US of A, just relaxing on my vacation, and I get a text message from Ryan. He's like, dude, Joseph is doing an Instagram live with Dr. Food. So he's like, I warned him against it. I told him not to do it. Again, Ryan always there with a the good sound advice. And Joseph obviously doesn't listen to Ryan. So I'm like, wait, what? He did what? He's like, yeah, they kind of talked about you, etc. I lost, I went crazy. I was, I was seeing red. I'm like, Joseph, he's, he's betraying me. I just did a documentary about Joseph. I helped to save his image, took it out of the toilet. Eventually I was able to secure the footage of Dr. Food and Joseph Shada. So let us watch it together. We, now the, the audio is pretty bad because they're like doing an Instagram live by Lebanon. So forgive us, it's not our fault, but still, this is still good uh, content. Okay, so... Um, Let's check it out. Anthony, documentary First of all, the fact that Joseph is calling me Mukhrij Amerikani, he's giving me so much credibility, like credibility that I do not have. Uh, I like that he makes me sound such like, like such an important person. <laughs> Joseph is trying to play so clueless. Joseph, like, you know everything, man. <laughs> Joseph Khaif, he's just, he's just seeing, like, the, he can imagine me like, yelling at him after this. So he's like, oh shit, oh shit. شفته <laughs> 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 He's, he's talking about the expose that Noor did. By the way, Dr. Food, I'm going to go to the internet. 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 I'm going to go to I'm really glad that Noor saw the expose. I'm yeah. so glad. <laughs> me too, me too. It's funny that like I never I would have never expected him to watch our stuff because like so many people do parodies the Dr. Food and kill kill one ما في حد بعد ما نزل فيه so the fact that he took the time to watch and say that he liked it and call us entertaining that's it's heartwarming Dr. Food عن جد start warming Monsieur George هو هو برافو عليه لأنه اليوم في في Dr. Food موجود اليوم مع الساحة العالم عم تتناقل العالم عم بدها تعرف مين هيدا برافو عليه إنه قادر يجيب فيز من وراي صحتان على صحتان اللي دفع حق اللي دفع حق Sorry, sorry, but we were talking about Dr. Food way before he came. He became this famous. Okay. Oh, by the way, with the most famous story, Tabultak, where everyone was talking about you, we did not touch your cock story. So we are not interested in, in clicks or or when we want clicks, please click. But I'm not. I don't follow 
uh, trends, ma, I don't care about algorithms, ولا شيء. مش ناتي لنا دكتور فود اسمك يكون طالع على trending على تويتر تحكي عنك. لا, أنا بحكي عنك قبل وبعدين. Not when you're trending. I was looking at him on the TV. This is such an awkward Instagram live. <laughs> These are my interns. Show some damn respect. Bintu Shab, holy interns. How do you say intern in Arabic? Okay, ma and the Tali Al Mobo. Anyway, Joseph, but I'm a defy Anna. La Hazet, Joseph, but I'm a defy Anna. He's like, ma and the Tali. He just sat there. He just sat there and let Dr. Food insult us, frankly. Like, he's not insane. He's being, Dr. Food's being pretty nice. But no, Joseph, Abad al Ma'arif, Katirim Labbak, he's like, oh shit, oh shit. I went on his Instagram live, I yelled at him, kind of. Then I felt bad, and Joseph explained that he didn't know what he was saying. But I said, I'm going to go to Joseph. We spent four days on that. We met your lovely grandmother. Did you forget those moments with your grandmother? He's like, I'm going to go to the car. Just for five minutes of fame, my Dr. Food. I'm going to go to the car. فهمت انا فهمت عليك يا جوزيف زين مش لسه زين بدك تقول انا بدي اعمل فيديو عنك ايه عادي بس ما فيك اليوم تيجي تقول لي انا اليوم وقت بطلع اقارن مطاعم العالم بطلع بحط الايتمز قدام عينك والباكج قدام عينك وبصور تفاصيل مشان تشوفها بعينك بس هو لا هو بيصير يحكي ويكب عامل لك مهضوم هو بيسليني ايامي حبيبي شو ايه بسوتش سلام تعينا انا وياه وصورنا اربع ايام عملنا فيلم عملنا دوكيومنتري عن حياتي بكذا منطقه بلبنان وكذا ما بعرف اذا سمعت فيه لا هو مخرج غير هيك ايه مخرج اكبر مخرج بلبنان انه دارس اخراج بس انه هو هذا الفيلم هو كان المخرج تبعه يعني عمله مخرج هو اسمه مخرج ساعه ونص هيك عرف الناس عني بطريقة مهضومة يوتيوب. عن حياتي عن عائلتي ايه نزلوا على يوتيوب على نفس التشانل اللي بينزل علي البرنامج اوكي اوكي ما همه هي is not interested in your documentary حبيبي انت يا شهدا حبيبي انت يا شهدا مرسي مرسي can you imagine watching this live like it's so uninteresting so anyways هي ده هي this is Dr. Food knows about us. After, after this uh, live, we released our Sushi Holic review, which, by the way, we didn't do anything to do it. We didn't do anything to get back at them. This was a video that actually a viewer gave me the idea for uh, Michael Ghanem on Instagram. He was like, hey, uh, you should review Dr. Food, the Dr. Food burger. I was like, I don't eat sushi, but I'm like, great idea, Michael. I'm going to write it down and I'm going to get my interns to do it. I'm glad we got to do it. Thank you for that idea, Michael. If you haven't watched that review, check it out. And hello, we're going to, the next topic is directly related to that. We also, we kind of wanted to talk about Dr. Food. If he's been ripping off this famous TikTok series, uh, can you make this gourmet? Do we feel like going through it now and doing a comparison? Not really. Maybe some other time. We're going to let it slide, doctor. We're going to let it doctor. Food. Joseph, you want to tell us Okay, so we were just talking about uh, Dr. Food, the Sushi Holic review. Well, a couple of days after we posted our Sushi Holic review on the channel, uh, we got a res uh, Noor got a DM. Was it on Instagram? Our Do Not Worry Instagram got a DM uh, from the owner of Sushi Holic. Now he he started it off with a hello dear. Now if every if anyone's been on Twitter, you know that our pet peeve as Lebanese people is when you send any business a message on Instagram like hey hello how much does this cost hello dear don't call me dear don't call anybody no one uses the word like hello dear unless you're writing like a weird letter or something back in the ancient times or something stop calling customers dear so he says hello dear this is Sebastian Tauk the owner of Sushi Holic thank you for messaging us Sebastian first of all thank you for your review second if I may get in contact with the manager of your page by giving me any phone number where I can reach you for a simple reason that I think the link you are making between Sushi Holic and Dr. Food is wrong. First of all, if I may get in contact with the manager of your page, but the YouTube channel has my name all over it. YouTube channel is called Anthony Sargon. If you wanted to get in touch with me, I think you would have known how to find me. I'm, I thought he sent you this message. The fact that he sent it to the Do Not Worry page makes this a little bit more palatable. But like you, you could figure out my name pretty quickly and you can get in touch with me if you really want to. Uh, for a simple reason that I think the link you're making between Sushi Holic and Dr. Food is wrong. 
We cooperated with them a few months ago for a boost of our rebranding, and that was it. Double exclamation mark. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, but what didn't Dr. Food do like a viral video where he was smashing tables and smashing glass at your restaurant around staff that were unprotected who could have gotten pieces of glass in their eye? It went extremely viral. Everyone in Lebanon was talking about the Dr. Food smashing the sushi holic thing. You mean that restaurant? Hmm. Why would you hire Dr. Food to promote your restaurant if you want to like completely ignore him just a few months later? You can't just like turn around and like betray, like you're betraying Dr. Food right now. You know what I mean? Like they're clearly very ashamed of Dr. Food, which is weird. And then he says, you know, the link is over. We cooperated with him for a boost of our rebranding and that was it. And why do you have an item on your menu that's called the Dr. Food Burger? My man, come on, Sebastian. Under the sea. Come on, I know you know what I'm talking about, Sebastian. If, if you've cut ties with Dr. Food, there, should, there shouldn't be an item called the Dr. Food Burger on your menu. It means that you're super proud of your relation with Dr. Food. You're so proud, in fact, that it's one of your special items, one of your specialties, the Dr. Food Burger. Come on, man. You got to either remove that off the menu. Like, I don't need to tell you that. You're a smart guy. Our work with him has ended months ago. And don't think we should always tie the two names together. Again, you should have thought of that earlier, man. Like, you can, you're trying to have your cake and eat it too. You can't turn around and just deny him or pretend like it didn't happen. You got to live with your choices, man. And I'm not, we're not trying to, like, punish you guys for working with them. The interns were super fair in their review. They said that they enjoyed the sushi, although they said there was too much rice. They said they enjoyed the noodles and that they were tasty, although they got a little slimy later. But they were very honest. They said that the staff was very friendly, the staff was very nice, very accommodating, they let them film, ma'alun and chi. So, it's not like we went in there to just shit on the restaurant, but yes, the fact that you guys worked with Dr. Food, and you're very associated with Dr. Food, and you have a burger on your goddamn menu, bro, called the Dr. Food Burger. So, until that's taken care of, then yes, people are going to make the link. And you paid money for that link, you paid Dr. Food money to come do what he did, so that people talked about your restaurant. Lo and behold, we're talking about your restaurant, but now you want us to stop? Come on, Sebastian. Come on, man. Under the sea, Sebastian. We appreciate, we'll appreciate if we can discuss furthermore. Discuss what, man? What am I? Waiting for a phone number so I can do that and have the chance to get to know you. Three exclamation points. It was just a weird message, man. Like, it's, this, this is a very uh, damage control-y. Hey, we, we, we don't know. We don't care about Dr. Food. How did this message strike you? I, Newell, for the record, Newell felt bad. She was like, oh, shit, I feel bad now. Like, maybe we shouldn't have been that mean. Maybe we shouldn't have said this. Maybe we shouldn't have said that. I was like, listen, you guys did your job. You guys gave an honest review. Okay, no one should feel bad. If anyone should feel bad about promoting Dr. Food, it's sushi-holic, man. You got to live with your decisions, man. Don't come crying to us. Um, how are you, how are you feeling about this whole thing? Oh, well, she, I really love give <laughs> a first chance Kabul at Dr. Food. Really. <laughs> I love that. But then, uh, what do you want to discuss? No, hey, what they like? We're not taking the review down. Oh, well done. Uh, what else do you want? Yeah, like, I want to get, and like, at first I thought he sent you that DM, like, I want a chance to get to know you. I'm like, don't message my interns and shit like that, bro. He didn't, he didn't, he messaged. The do not worry page on Instagram. But anyways, that is our official response. If you're wondering why we didn't answer, here's your answer now, man. Okay. Um, I don't think I'll, we're going to get invited to any of his restaurants anytime soon, which I think is fine. Interns, thank you very much for your diligent work and your honest review. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Sushi Holic, Mr. Tawu, um, if you don't want to be associated with the Dr. Food, it's pretty simple. Don't work with him. You guys might remember from a few weeks ago, our good tourist friend, Nanobytes Inc. What, 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 do you remember his name? Nathan, Nathaniel, God, what was his name? Can you check? I'm blocked. He blocked me on Instagram. Nathaniel something, also known as Nanobytes Inc. On YouTube and on TikTok. He travels, he does vlogs. He was very happy to come to Lebanon and enjoy our hyperinflation. He was like, hey, I'm in Lebanon. I'm going to be a millionaire. Then he... His laptop got stolen and his passport got stolen. So he had to stay in Lebanon for like an extra few weeks to get a replacement passport because his passport got stolen. Either. Well, he's in Barcelona now. And guess what? That dumbass got his passport stolen again. I shit you not, folks. The same fucking motherfucker who lost his passport here, who got it stolen. Nada to be Barcelona. Like, this is fucking hilarious. You can't make this stuff up. Maybe at this point he is faking it. Like, maybe he's trying to make it his shtick. Like, hey, I lose my passport anywhere I go. 
Anyways, I tried to invite him on the podcast, by the way, for an interview. He refused. So here he is in Barcelona. Do you guys want to watch me get my passport stolen for the second time in two months? Yes. Get his fucking passport, bro. So that is everything that I own. Uh, I've got the phone in my hand because I was vlogging with that. I've got the wallet in my pocket so I can still purchase things. And that's it. I can't even charge my phone anymore. This is Future Nate here. And today ended up being a fucking fiasco of chasing down hobos and diving into dumpsters to try to get my bag back. I'm uploading the full video to YouTube right now so you guys can see how it all unfolded. Fucking Barcelona, I swear. People warned me about the city before I ever came here. I did get to meet an ISOBO though. Okay, by the, the word hobo is derogatory, my friend. We don't call homeless people hobos. Where's your humanity, you piece of shit? I used to call homeless people hobos and I've learned my lesson. I'm a better person for it now because I don't do it. Now here's his second video uh, where he's talking about getting a replacement passport. It's fucking absurd. And he's always wearing that same fucking leather jacket. Check it out. I got my replacement passport in less than a day. The U.S. consulate here in Barcelona is absolutely incredible. If you're going to get your passport stolen, get it stolen in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. Great, great advice. Great advice. <laughs> Any commentary on our good friend Nate? Did you, what did, you know, did you figure out his last name? Uh, Nathaniel Hayes. Nathaniel Hayes. Ah, Nathaniel. Good times. Well, yeah, that was just it's a quick, quick update. Oh, we have, you know what? Speaking of annoying fucks, uh, we have a Tufiluk video. Mm, uh, someone sent this to me without a lot of context. But look, hala Tufiluk ma'aja al Lebanon, and then they stopped him at the airport al Matar because he he had insulted our 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 great great president. Or I don't know what he he said something. I'm kidding about the great president. He was caught al Matar, and then said, "Ana ana al humanitarian, and ana al activist, and ana and ana wafune, ana ana bi wafune ele." Here's our good activist, not sexist, very respectful guy speaking to a girl on TikTok. ست بشرة اعتذر ست لا تعتذر بشرة. رد عليك بس تعتذر بكل اناقطة طيب بكل طيب يا توفيق ماشي يا توفيق هلا هي واتس هير نيم اجين وات ديد يو كول هير بشرة شي دازنت سترايك مي لايك از ميبي ذا شاربست تول ان ذا شيد لايك هيز بين سيتش لايك اي هي كولد هير لايك straight up شرموطة then he's like انت بس بتشتري ال H and J ب 6000 لانه ما معك تشتري H and M like عم تتمنك على الفقراء هلا يا اخي ما عم بفهم are you making fun of poor people خبز صار ب 40000 عند عند فضول كي سبان دو مي خي ب 40000 عند المولان دار وشو عم تحكي يا خرا قاعد بانجلند مبسوط عم يبهدل العالم انه ما معك تشتري H and M وي كالز ذم شراميت يو بيس اوف شيت ار يو اوتريجد اباوت ذس از ماتش از اي ام لا at this point and خلص this is to feel you. You're right. I mean I'm not outraged. I just like to show how much of a piece of shit he is and the fact that he reminds me of Nanobytes Inc does not bode well for you Nathaniel. Does not bode well for you. You give me to feel you vibes that's For the main topic for tonight's episode, are we going to be talking about Perfect Strangers or the Arabic remake of Perfect Strangers? It is called Ashab Wala Az. Um it is it was it an Italian movie originally? So this is a an Arabic remake of an Italian movie. It came out on Netflix. It was produced by Front Row Films. Actually, I am friends with one of the associate producers of the film. His name is Eli Tuma. Eli, congratulations on the film's success. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm his best friend. He's actually one of my cousin's best friends. So like they're very close. But like I know him. Uh, we've interacted a bunch on Twitter. Super happy for for their success. So if you've been living under a rock for the past week, um, you would know that this movie came out on Netflix and has been doing crazy numbers. Like it's number one in almost every single country in the Middle East, if not every country in the Middle East that has Netflix. It was like number two in France. So people are, are, are watching this. It's going viral. It has sort of become a part of the zeitgeist. It, it was like the main conversation on Twitter for the past few days. But not for the reasons you'd expect. Again, unfortunately, we live in the Middle East and we were reminded why this place can kind of be fucked up sometimes because people lost their shit that 
the movie tackled, you know, topics like, you know, sex, women having sex, what? Women drinking, I guess, men being gay, that's all too crazy and extreme for us. Before we get into some of the funny tweets, and yes, as offensive as these tweets are, I still find them funny and ridiculous because it, it is just incredibly stupid. Uh, let's give a quick review of the film. I'm gonna go ahead first. Um, I really liked the film. I thought it was a very solid movie. It was directed by Wissam Smeda, also co-written by Wissam, and it was co-written by Gabriel Yamin. Their names are both familiar. I don't know if I could name any of their previous work. I'm not that into like Lebanese cinema or anything like that, but um, they did a great job. The film is very well directed. It's very nicely written. Okay, it's based on... It's a remake, so I don't know how much of the dialogue is like original or like, yeah, they, they were given like the basic outline of a story, but still it's, it's nicely written. It was pretty relatable. Is it the greatest movie on earth? No, if you're looking at Twitter, you would think it's the greatest movie ever made because this just reveals how we are deprived of, of just like competent movies. All we get is like Eagle or Falcon films about Maggie Burson that are like garbage or we get like a... Uh, Nadine Labake, like Oscar nominated film. There's never anything in the middle. And those really good movies are very few and far between. So when you hit Lebanese people with something semi decent and competent, they don't know how to fucking react. Like, holy sh, everyone's losing their minds. Like, this movie is fine. It's great. It's, very, it's, it's a very good movie. I'm not saying that it's just decent or average. To see people talking about it on Twitter, you would think this is like Citizen Kane or something. It's not. It's just a very solidly told story. It's very well acted, it's very well directed, it's very entertaining, you know, it's very well done. I, I don't know all of the actors' names, but I think everyone acquitted themselves really well. The actors, at first, I was like, what? Adil Karam is in this? Oh, he's, it's not, like, he's a, he's not a horrible actor, but, like, he's very, he plays a very specific kind of person. He's perfect in the role because he plays exactly who you would think Adil Karam would play, so that didn't bother me. One of the characters at first, played by Diamant, Diamant Aboud, at first I was like, she would never date a guy like Adil, like, never. I had a hard time buying that. But again, even as the movie goes on, like you just realize, okay, she's just super naive. So like it, that worked for me later. It made sense. Fuad Yamin, who was one of my favorite Lebanese actors. I think he's my favorite Lebanese actor because honestly, he's so natural. He never looks like he's acting. He's really the most natural person. I think who, Bilibnain, who acts. He was great. I love him in everything that he does. Even if like a movie is shit, Fuad Yamin always manages to like shine and to stand out and acquit himself. So he was great. Uh, the Egyptian actors were really good. It was, it was really well acted. And again, you need a very good, direction, a good director at the helm to get these performances out of people. So, uh, so Wissam did a very good job. Um, now, my, my biggest complaint about the film, to be honest with you, I think it's unrealistic as fuck. And that's, Machas, again, Machas, the writers, this is a, you know, I, I would say the same thing about the Italian version of the film. No fucking adults on this planet are going to agree to play the stupid fucking game of revealing what is on their phones. Like, Spider-Man No Way Home has more of a chance of happening than the events of Perfect Strangers. Don't believe me? Fuck, try to do this with your friends at dinner, see what the fuck happens, okay? Seriously, Avengers Endgame is more likely to happen, I feel, than the events of this movie. And I, I hated Nadine Lebeke's character. I'm like, fuck you. Why are you inviting people over to your house and ruining their fucking lives with your stupid fucking games? And she kept insisting, like, let's play the game. Why don't you want to play the game? Like, fucking shit, Shwedik Fina, leave the people fucking enjoy their dinners, man. Busting out your phone just because you got some weird, like, fucking shit that you're doing. I... I hated her. Like, if I were sitting at that table, I'd be like, listen, guys, this was fucking weird. I'm never fucking coming back here in my life. Fuck y'all motherfuckers. Fuck you guys for inviting me to your house and making me play this sick fucking twisted game. How did they fix it at the end? The ending kind of makes everything make sense. If that hadn't happened, I would've been like, what the fuck was that? So I'm glad that that happened. But again, very enjoyable movie. It was kind of stressing me out at points. I don't like to feel anxiety when I watch movies. It was but like, it, it's, it was just, it was a very well-made movie. I'm super happy for everyone involved. Uh, what do you, what do you think of the movie? Um, I really liked it. Anna, I saw the French version a couple of years ago. Okay. Well, I, I remember it really, uh, really well. Oh, I like this one even better because like you're okay, seeing awesome. it be your language. Mm -hmm. We are seeing these issues be your language and well, these things are happening. How similar is it to the French version? It's the same. Nafso. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean like some Lebanese stuff. Okay. okay. It's like the, the story, basically the same. Okay. Uh, that's it. I really, I really liked it. Come in, this, this made me think of a couple of other things before we get into reading the reviews. It made me think, if this had come out in movie theaters, would it have made 
as much noise? Would it have gotten as much traction? I'm going to say something controversial. I'm going to say no. I'm, I'm thinking one of the main reasons this movie captured the public's attention so much is because it dropped on Netflix. We were all able to watch it at the same time at home. People are still hesitant to go to the movies because of the pandemic. Movie tickets in Lebanon are now way more expensive than they ever were because of the hyperinflation. So a lot of people can't afford to go to the movies. They also can't afford to subscribe to Netflix anymore. But anyways, I feel like everyone can get their hands on a Netflix account. Maybe you can stream it online illegally. Not that I'm encouraging that. Please watch it on Netflix. Encourage front row. Encourage my, uh, my man Eli and let that movie get, you know, more numbers. But like, I really do think the fact that it was on Netflix helped propel the movie to heights that I don't think we would have seen if it came out in the movie theater. And it also makes me wonder, are Lebanese creators going to learn the right or the wrong lessons from this movie? Like, they're like, okay, are we going to get a bunch more remakes now? Like, because this is a remake that did very well, is everyone going to assume that, okay, I guess we need to find another Spanish or Italian movie that we need to remake in, in, in Arabic. I have a feeling... A lot of people might might jump to that and know that's that's the solution. Let's just remake stuff. Um, I don't think that that like I don't think we need to just turn into a country that only makes remakes. You know, I think we have very good storytellers in Lebanon, but you just need to identify them and give them an opportunity to tell stories. But I hope that we don't just end up making remakes. And I hope that people don't try to do controversial stuff for the sake because this movie was controversial and like got people talking. I hope we don't just get movies made because of that. Like the town had sex, Twitter. Like that also shouldn't be what we're doing. I think what this movie highlights is that give good writers the opportunity to write scripts, uh, find a good director that can fucking do it, cast it right, find a good, just have a good story to tell and people I think will watch it. The fact that they also had this like all-star Avengers cast of Lebanese actors. The only person I, I think it's missing is Badia Abu Shada. I love Badia Abu Shada. I got to work with him on one episode of Fixer, currently streaming on Shahid, uh, produced by Last Floor Productions. As we were saying, fans lost their shit. People lost their shit. Not fans, but like uh, homophobes. We got a bunch of we got a bunch of crazy tweets to read to you guys. So here we got uh, Ra'is Jumhuriya Twitter. فيلم سيء يدعم الشذوذ ويهدم مبادئ المجتمع. Oh shit! No, we got some shuzuth in there, man. We got them gays. Uh, what is this? Moka Sirka. Okay, so there's even there's a website that uh, like illegally pirates movies that they were like, not we're not gonna pirate this one because it goes against our our values. موقع سرقة الأفلام الشهير إجي بسبب I don't know what the fuck I'm reading. الفيلم المثير للجدل أصحاب ولا عز للحفاظ على القيم الاجتماعية والثوابت الإخلاقية. Wow, thank you, criminals, for for uh, for standing by what's right. Uh, the actress, what's her name? Mona Zaki. Mona Zaki. She's an Egyptian actress. She got into a whole bunch of shit because Egyptians apparently are turning, are going back to the fucking Stone Age. Egyptians are so offended. But like, she took off her underwear. But a while no Egyptian women don't do that. Egy Egyptians, yeah. Uh, Musarwe, hey, ekhwati, hadrin aflamkum. Have you seen your own movies from the fucking 60s and 70s? Shubek on yamne. Let's stop going. Let's, uh, your parents fucked. Your parents had sex to have you. Ooh, think about that for an hour. Uh, so Hone Bilag and Naib Al Amir Dud Muna Zaki, so Naib, like some some politician is trying to like get her to go to court. Oh she be tehmat nashr al fusak wal fujur lah la ua. Here's some here's some comments on Instagram. I asked Elijah to get me tweets, he gets me Instagram comments. Ah chufi Elijah. At the Hamas Kitir Ashuf Bas Saddamat min al Afkar li Yukadimu Hal film Bijad. إزاي جايبين أن الأفكار دي كلها عادي لا تعليق I don't know what the fuck he said or what I just said بيع مبادئ وأصول مقابل شهر وفلوز وواضح جدا خسرت كتير من جمهورك بسبب ده So I guess they're talking So هنا عم يحكوا منى زكي So these are all comments directly لمنى زكي أول مرة ما أحب فيلم لك أبدا ما حلو ما حبيته أبدا وإنت مش إنت يا منى الصراحة الزيادة من في الكلام ما قدرت أكملها آسفة بس لا تعليق أو لا 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 يليق هيدي فطومة هلا 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 راح نشنج ولا والله حرام يا منى تشاركي في كذا أفلام تسيء لكل لك أولا لك أولا يلا ندى ندى شو قالت ندى أنت كاتبة إنجلي إنجليزي ومتوقعة 
أن متابعينك كلهم مولودين في لندن أي الاستفزاز ده نقطة سودة في تاريخك الفيلم ده I like how they say that though ميشو أنا مش فاهم ليش كاتبة بال... آه هيدا بالإنجليزي آه لا ليش كاتبة بالإنجليزي فش فش إليك شعبية خارج الوطن العربي اطمني اطمني دكتور سوز الفيلم كتير أجنبي لا يموت لنا بسلطة اللي لسه ما شافوش ما يضيعش وقته فيلم سيء لدهجة تصدم للأسف ما عجبنيش أبدا ولا موضوعه ولا الجائع ال... جراء الأوفع الأوفع اللي فيه في فرق بين الانفتاح والتطوع والترويج للأفكار وسلوك مخالفة لدينا بالكامل لدينا لدينا أو لدينا نور عين 886469 دخلت شفته هو مش مقامك أبدا مقامك I don't know what that means man عبير دهودي أنت مش بت... بتاعة أفلام زي دي أنت أرقى من كده بكتير Oh, honey, we got an English comment. Worst movie ever. Very disappointing. Hey, the Isra Yas. Zainab, the film is not good. It's 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 not good. This is Mona's post. I had the pleasure to work with each and every one that took part of this movie. I don't know. I think she knew what was going to happen to her. Film is very good. Film is very good. Blah. Puke, puke. 800 likes. Tweets. We got Mace underscore K. Stop normalizing the shit. Hashtag Ashab. Wala. أعز يعتبر الفيلم سقطة في تاريخ منى زكي وإياد نصر و... وأبغى أسأل مني وإياده وأنتو كده بتدافعوا عن الممث... المثليين وحقوقهم أي موقف موقفكم من أولادكم بعد الفيلم الساقط فكريا وإخلاقيا عن جد أنتو كمان جيز جيز ولو جاء واحد من أولادكم وكان شاذ كان ردكم لازم تتس... تتمسكوا بحقوقكم وتدافعوا عن شذوذكم؟ I don't know what the fuck she's saying. Uh, هون عندنا محمد الفاكه disgusting hashtag أصحاب ولا أعز. By the way, all your dumbass tweets are just bringing more attention to the film. They're they're loving the publicity. So thank you guys for the publicity because you guys have helped propel this film to the top. Dumb fucks. Uh, سامي ما رأيكم بإنتاج فيلم إباحي؟ إلا يوجد في الواقع حالات زنا؟ أذن ما المانع أذن ما المانع من إنتاج فيلم إباحي يحاكي إباحي يعني بورن رايت؟ لوك برو شو بك؟ كلامي لأصحاب أغبى حجة بشرية بعد الإلحاد والتي يبررون بها الأفلام الهابطة بحجة أن تصوير الواقع إلا يوجد إرهاب في الواقع؟ Are you talking about terrorism or some shit? Which lay out the terrorism, ya khayy? Hashtag Muna Zaki, hashtag Haram, he akali takta shi khara Muna man. Film Safil Munhat yad'u li nashr al zedliya wa an ala nas an yata yata tawaru wa yata had yata haddaru bi qubul al film wa ma yabishkush rajayin wa ma bikunush rajayin. Tab al fahish al lutiya qadima yani. رجعي مش تطوير وإذا نبحث عن القديم فلنح... فلنبحث على قديلة مش سفالة تغضب والله وترسل على... You guys got a bunch of gays in Egypt, okay? I don't know if you guys know that. There's a lot of gay people in Egypt, okay? You probably know a lot of them. They're just afraid to tell you because you're a fucking asshole. So there we go. Uh, I think that is all. Thank you for the crazy tweets, you motherfuckers. Oh no, titties! Titties! <laughs> This final topic isn't a serious topic. It's not really even a topic at all. Uh, someone, a coworker of mine, Joy, hey Joy, sent me this video, ironically, of someone called Mama's Joy. We've talked about her. We covered her on the TikTok cringe part two. She is this like foodie. She does she does food. She's weird as fuck. Uh, here's her making a cake with expired cream cheese. Okay, just look at like this is us in Lebanon now. People are so fucked that they can only afford to buy like expired food because it's probably the price is marked down. So she's like, hey, let me teach you how to make a cake with expired cream cheese. Let's let's watch that really quickly, and then we have a fun little game that we're gonna play. 
اليوم امي جاي لعندي مش جايبت لي سحارة فواكه جايبت لي اثنين باكي من الكريم تشيز قلت لها يا ماما شو صاير عليك قالت لي ما هن عاملين عليهم اوفر لان مدتهم خالصة قلت لها ما فهمت يعني ناوية تقتليني قالت لي واذا اذا مدتهم للخالصة يعني انه بيصيرنا شي لما رح يصيرنا شي ما بدك اياهم انا باخدهم قلت لها لا لا خلي لي اياهم هلا بعمل كارت كيك وبعمل لها هيك كريمة للكارت كيك تطلع كتير طيبة معمولة من الكريم تشيز فأنا عملت البتر كريم وخلطها بالكريم تشيز ما بخبركن شو طلعت طيبة وخليت الكيك الكارت كيك قسمته لثلاثة وحشيتهم بالكريم تشيز وغطيتها كلها سوا والزينة زينتهم بالجوز لأنه بقلب الكارت كيك كمان فيه جوز وهولي قطع الكراميل هيك حرقت سكر وحطيتهم من فوق بس بردو وبعدين عملت صوص كراميل طيب كتير وطلع الكيك روعة هل اكتبوا لي بالتعليق بعرف انه انا ما ببيع كيك وبعرف انه انا مني هالقد شاطرة بس انه طلع كتير طيب Okay, like there's Please not much. Please, not to be a cake. Plus, you're not expired cakes. I don't have much to say about this. Okay, but it just reminded me. I've been saving these Spider-Man snacks since 2007. These are two expired snacks. Okay, I bought these in two. These are Spider-Man three snacks. Spider-Man three came out in 2007. Now these expired in 2010. Okay, this one. This is a little lollipop. It says um, right here. Check it out. It says best before 15 May 15th, 2010. And this is one of those lollipops like you dip in those like little rocks and then they pop in your mouth and stuff. This one expired on the 28th of April, uh, 2010 as well. So uh, I was I was hoping Elijah was here so that I would feed each of you an expired snack. But he's not here. He dodged the bullet. He's got COVID. So I'm going to do the pop rock. I'm going to try this pop rock uh, lollipop. You're going to get this expired Spider-Man 3 little like pen lollipop. Here you go. Um, yeah, I mean, 12, 12 years later, I think it's time we finally try these expired snacks. Uh, so let's do it, folks. Let's open this up here. Check, check this out. I'm opening it again. If you don't believe me, here's the expiration date. Okay, I ain't lying to y'all. This thing's been expired for 12 years. The things we do for the podcast. And things we do for the patrons. Patrons, this one's for you. Uh, we're, everyone's going to get to watch this, but holy fuck, man. Yeah, this is adorable. <laughs> Does it even open? Oh, you got... Oh, my God. Good luck unwrapping that fucking thing. While she's doing that... Okay, here's... This is just a foot. Now, they could have made this like... They could have tried harder to put make it like a spider or something. Shoot, why is it a foot? Uh, first, I got to lick this thing. Then I got to dip it into the the pop rock. Just do, just do one, you know. Get one taste of it. If it's bad, <laughs> dump it. It's, it's okay. I'm going to lick this. Okay, folks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dip in right now. Still tastes good. What is it, like strawberry? Look, this this still tastes okay. I'm gonna say that the lollipop is still good for 12 year old lolly, for a 15 year old lolly, but it's been expired for 12 years. It actually tastes pretty decent. Hey, honestly, I would continue this. I would not know the difference. I'm gonna dip it in the rocks, okay? I'm gonna dip that thing in those rocks. Let's see if they still pop. Oh my god, yeah, they do. Oh, it's so weird. Wow, this tastes really good, man. I'm not gonna lie. Is I, I can't taste mine. The plastic is It's a dude from the top or something. <laughs> this is legit enjoyable, man. This is pretty. I wish I gave you this one, I guess. I thought this would be more risky. No, it's good. Tastes good, right? I'm shocked how much just like the bubble stuff. If you want, you want to try to dip it? I already I dipped know, it. How down. bad does sugar get? My body. Yeah, this is fucking delicious. Yeah. I was hoping one of us would get like sick or something. I want to dip. But here, dip, this is safe. I know I want to eat my spit. The pop rocks are still like very pop rocky. And if I did get COVID at that Chili's, I'm sorry. You'll probably, you'll get it now. <laughs> God damn. Chili's, I think, is only popular in Lebanon. Chili's, I'm be sick to be American. I'm be looking at them for be chilies. Thank. I hope someone should tell them. Oh my god. They're crazy, aren't they? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's really good. All right. Well, anyways, I'm gonna throw this. I don't want to get fucking sick from this shit. Gags over. Uh, yeah. That those. Thank you for joining me for these expired snacks, Elijah. You missed You're that welcome. one, man. 
Folks, thank you so much for joining us for episode 44, our comeback episode of Do Not Worry. Uh, this was fun. I, I was worried. I thought this was going to be kind of a shit show just because I've, I've been so out of this. I haven't done this in a while. You'd be surprised how quickly one would lose his podcasting skills, folks. Uh, but thank you. Thank you so much. As usual, please give this video a like. Leave a comment. Your engagement is crucial for the success of this channel. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, okay? A lot of the viewers that watch our shows don't subscribe to the channel. Hit that button. It doesn't cost you anything, and it, it makes a big difference for us. So become a Do Not Warrior. Subscribe to the channel. Consider supporting us on Patreon, where your help, your monetary support makes a tangible difference in the show. It makes sure that I can hire the interns. It makes sure that I'm still excited to come here, because if I don't have the interns, I don't want to do the show anymore because it's too tiring, but... They make it palatable. They make it fun. Okay, so let's keep it going. Let's keep this Patreon active. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. I love you all. Uh, Bilal Mughrabi, Roni Abed, Badsby, Mark Kiwan, Philip Edward Eel, Danny Habib, my boy, May Majid, Malik Kalash, Karim Baladi. Thank you guys so much. Awesome blonde patrons and some fantastic superhero patrons. I already said most of your names in the beginning, but Rhea D, Ziad Ashad, happy birthday again, motherfucker. Happy birthday. You have a great birthday. I hope you had a great birthday. Uh, Rasha Odi again, welcoming Tar and Edward. Uh, Tar, Jamo, and Edward's fade as brand new superhero patrons. Bless you guys. Mocha Bada. Ali Hijazi, Rami Gharib, Ahmad and Lamia. They've been with me for the, from the beginning. Thank you guys so much. We love you. Join our Discord. Like the video. Comment. Subscribe to the channel. As usual, do not worry. Do not worry.